Good afternoon. Um, today we are going to continue looking at what we had looked at yesterday in terms of the idea of dimensional analysis. We had talked about a new way that we can use dimensional analysis, a new relationship if you will, and that was a concept that we learned yesterday in talking about something that we called moles as well as molar mass. And so today we're going to continue that concept um, by looking at or completing an activity that's going to give us a chance to calculate the amount of moles of chalk in or used in writing our name. So objectives for this activity are simply this, that we're going to use problem solving skills and dimensional analysis to determine the number of moles in our name for writing a piece of chalk. Now a little bit about that. So some of these steps you might have already done. I'm not really sure where you're going to be at as you get started. So I'm just going to go ahead and walk you through the basic steps and then you have the period to work on this activity. So in just a second or if you have if you've already been given it that's fine you're gonna get a piece of chalk um, provided by your teacher that you're gonna mass out on an electronic balance. Now when you do this when you get that chalk and you mass it out we're gonna call that your initial mass alright so you're gonna get a piece of chalk and you're gonna figure out what we call the initial mass then you're gonna follow your instructors directions to take that piece of chalk and go down to Jack's Landing and on the pavement down there you're gonna write your name as big or small as you like now you can write just your first name your last name your full name it doesn't really matter you're just gonna go down there and you're gonna write your name once you do that you're gonna come back upstairs and you're ready to complete step three step three this might be where some of you are at now will tell you that upon completion of writing your name you're gonna mass your chalk again now this is gonna be called your final mass and that's important because the differences or difference in these is gonna give you the mass of your name so picture it your initial mass which you measured in step one the difference so minus your final mass is going to give you the mass of chalk in your name. Now that's great, but you're not done, right? Because remember that the question, if you will, the unknown to start with, So in step four, now, if chalk is really just something called calcium carbonate, you can use the information you have to ultimately answer the question. So remember, the question at the very beginning was how much or how many moles of chalk are in your name, right? Now we could technically call that the unknown, right? So ultimately in the end, we're trying to go to moles of chalk in our name. But in order to do that, we're going to go through another step first. And that is we're going to have to figure out something we talked about yesterday, which was the molar mass. Now remember, when calculating the molar mass, that's the masses or the mass from the periodic table. We actually call that the atomic mass. We're going to look more in that as we get into the next unit. Um, it's going to be the atomic mass of this substance. Remember that's in grams, right? So we're going to call it grams. And remember we get those measurements from the periodic table. And remember that that equals one mole. So really what that's saying is whatever you get for the molar mass of calcium carbonate, that's going to equal one mole. Mole. Now, reminder, y'all, when you're trying to figure that out, all you really got to do is look on the periodic table, find calcium's molar mass, which is like 40, find carbon's, which is 12.01, find oxygen's, but there's three of them, right? So 3 times 16, which is really just 48. So really we're just adding 40, 12.01, and 48, and whatever you get for that mass, that's your molar mass, right? So that's your molar mass, and again, that's in grams. So grams, and that equals what? It equals one mole. Now that's great, 
But what is that, or why does that matter? Because that's going to help us then to do the unknown, moles of chalk. So remember that in order to do that, we first got to start with our known. In this case, our known was what? Well, our known was the mass of chalk. We know the mass of chalk in our name. Or we could even really just say it as the mass of... CaCO3 in our name, right? Because we said in this case that the chalk we're using is really just calcium carbonate. Now it's important to note that not all chalk you have is calcium carbonate. Um, chalk can actually be different kinds of substances, but this is just one uh, example. So the mass of calcium carbonate in our name. Um, remember our unknown, so if we've got grams of calcium carbonate, which will be our known, we're trying to go to our unknown. In this case, our unknown, as we said, is moles of calcium carbonate in our name. Well, then we can figure out a conversion factor, right? And really, that's just the amount of grams versus one mole also known as the molar mass, right? We, just like what we did yesterday in class. So whatever we have for the molar mass, we can simply plug it in to our conversion and we can solve for the moles of calcium carbonate in our name. And that would give us through this step. We would have the molar mass, we would have the moles of chalk in our name. But now we're going to do the next step. Now the next step gets a little bit more complicated. So I want you to picture this and I'm going to work this through or the idea of it through with you. And then like I said, you're going to get the whole period to work on this calculation. And I'll talk to you in just a minute what about what I'm going to have you do when you're all done. But let's picture it, right? So in the end, when we're all done, we're going to have an answer and that answer is going to be so many moles of CaCO3 in our name. But now we want to figure out the moles of Ca, the moles of C, and the moles of O, or oxygen, in our name. So the question is how do we do that? So I want you to picture this for a minute and I want you to remember that if we had one CaCO3, so we could say one, like one mole, if you will, that really it's just one Ca, kind of like what we did up here, it's one C, and it's three, ran out of room, O's. So it's one Ca, it's one C, and it's really just three O's. So really we have a relationship, right, that one mole of CaCO3 equals one mole of Ca, one mole of C, and three moles of O. So again, we have a relationship that could allow us to do well exactly what we just done, right? We could go from something that we know, like the moles of calcium carbonate, into something that we don't know, like the moles of calcium, or the moles of carbon, or the moles of oxygen. That's going to be a little challenging, and I realize that you might have questions about that as you're going through it, y'all, so please don't hesitate to ask, um, but ultimately your objective is to get through these three questions as you finish them today. What I'd like you to do is this. I would like you to, at the very end, when you're all done, I'd like you to, between you and your lab partner or the partner or whoever you're, you're working with, I'd like you to take a picture of your work with your final answers circled and I'd like you to message it to me on Remind so I can take a look at what you got. Now when you do that y'all, please make sure that somewhere on either the message or on the paper or something that you've got both your name and your partner's name so I can see what you've done, I can see how, what you're understanding, what you're not, um, and so that I can help you as needed. All right. Again, please don't hesitate to send me a message if you have a question, but I definitely want you to send me a message with your final answers, including the work. Tomorrow, 
And Friday, we're going to spend some time in class doing some review as you prep. And then on Monday of next week, you're going to be testing over this information. Um, that's all, y'all. I hope you have a great day. Again, please do not hesitate to message me if you should have any questions at all.